All right, we are back to finish off the build today. Previously in part one, linked in the description, we installed all of the hardware to come up with a tubing plan. However, we had to deal with a cracked Check CPU block. Cracks. Luckily for us, we had a spare. But believe me, today's issues get much, much worse. Let's continue with the build, and I hope to earn your subscription today. So I've been really thinking about how I want to get the tubing done in this build, and this is the Pacific DP100 D5 Plus. It's essentially a distro plate with only a single in and out and a built-in D5 pump. Now, if you guys remember the build from the previous video, we have a big space right next to the left side of the motherboard tray, and it only makes sense to fill that up with a pump res combo because we still don't have an area that we have designated for a reservoir. Now with what I want to do with our tubing, this is pretty much the only spot that I can mount a pump res combo, so this is going to work out absolutely perfect. Boom. Here I come. Oh. It's completely broken off right where the pump is. You can see a piece of acrylic just sitting in the uh, pump canopy there. This is the only one we have, so I need to make this work, so I think we're going to have to take this apart and try and repair it. So this is what we're left with right here. We've got a gigantic hole, which to be fair, I feel like this would still function as normal. I mean, instead of the smaller hole, it's just a bigger hole. So it would still function. I just don't know what the bigger hole is gonna do to the flow of the system. So I wanna try and repair it back to its original state as best as possible. I'm also gonna try and reinforce it because I don't feel like a little bit of acrylic weld is going to be enough for this. So if I cut out another layer of acrylic and then acrylic weld that on top, I think that should do the job. So we got the broken piece in, it's actually fitting quite snug, so we'll hit it with the acrylic weld first. It's not exactly the prettiest fix, but it is one that was really needed because we don't have time to go out and get another one or even send this in for warranty. I think after we're done with this, I'll probably just give it away to someone. Let me know in the comments below if you're in need of a pump reservoir distro. It'll still fully function fine. The only issue for me is that if I put some colored liquid in here, a little bit might seep under there. And then if we decide to change the color, it'll probably be visible. Uh, but if that's not an issue for you guys, then one of you guys can have it. So just let me know in the comments. Hopefully that fits through this side here. Makes it easier to install. Come on, man. How about through here? Just gotta get this pump through. There we go. That's perfect. Okay, so once we get a couple of screws in, then this should be fairly easy to install. Let's start with the bottom right. We'll get one up the top left, and that should hold it in place. Make it so much easier to screw the rest in. There we go. Now the amazing thing about having a reservoir at this particular spot is the front has this very large gap here and that allows access to the top port, which is gonna make it so much easier for filling the build. And we won't miss a screw. We'll put as much as we can in these metal brackets as well, because that's gonna help support the reservoir during shipping if there's any bumps up and down. We want as much stability as possible, because the acrylic can crack, but the metal, metal's not gonna crack. Okay, so I figured out a plan for the tube runs. We're gonna have them all come down and then straight into a back panel that I'm gonna create. So, we better get tube bending. Using the side of the case always comes in handy to get a perfect 90 degree bend. Now 
that we've got all of our tubes in, we need to create this back false panel. So I'm measuring up the dimensions of this panel and then I'm gonna create one in Adobe Illustrator so that I can bring it in and mark down the position of the tube so I know where to cut the holes. Let's get into it. Look at that, perfect alignment for all the tubes to go through and pass through this panel. Time to work on the tubing for the back side. Well, we completely finished the back panel of the build and we ended up going with the EK 90 degree things because they aren't as tall as the thermal take ones, so it gave us a bit more room to play with. Now it's time to take this all apart and paint the acrylic. So I'm going to add two more intake fans straight down the bottom. That's gonna make our intake and exhaust completely even for this system. And of course, we're going to install all of our cables before we put our back panel in that we made because we're not gonna have access to the back once it's installed. For the power supply, we want to make sure we have some good, reliable juice to power this system, especially with an RTX 4080 graphics card. So we have an ATX 3.0 compatible power supply. This is the Tough Power GF3 from Thermaltake. Uh, 1000 watts, 80 plus gold certified. And the awesome thing about this power supply as well is it has a zero smart fan feature that you can switch on or off, which enables the fan to start operation all the time or just when it needs it. So you can reduce noise in your system essentially. And now for the power supply installation. So we'll make sure that the fan is facing outwards. The back panel actually has uh, some venting grill marks there as well. So there's gonna be plenty of airflow for the power supply. And look at all the room we have for all of the cable management. This is absolutely brilliant because we have a lot of cables that we need to manage at the back here, especially with using extensions as well. Thanks for watching guys. Up here, you'll see a new video where we made an ITX Overwatch themed PC. If you enjoyed today's video, you're gonna absolutely love that one. Make sure you leave a like on the video and go check it out.